most countries tax income earned in their country. This leads to the potential that a resident of one country must pay tax on the same income to two countries. To mitigate this, residents and citizens are allowed a credit against federal income tax for foreign income taxes paid or accrued. Accrued means the liability to pay the tax has become fixed and the amount can be reasonably determined. A taxpayer using the cash method of accounting, like most individuals, can permanently elect to take the foreign tax credit on the accrued basis. The foreign tax credit is not refundable. That is, the amount allowed as a credit cannot exceed federal income tax. The amount of foreign tax available for credit may exceed the amount allowed as a credit in any year. Any such excess is carried back or forward, that is, it's treated as if paid in another year, and can be used as a credit in that year. The carryover period is currently back one year and forward ten years. A separate computation of the foreign tax credit limitation and carryovers is done for regular tax and for the alternative minimum tax. The foreign tax credit is limited to the portion of U.S. tax on foreign source taxable income. A separate limit applies for each of two separate baskets or categories of income, general and passive. Passive income is interest, dividends, rents, and royalties, and gains on property that gives rise to such income. There are some exceptions to this. So, Steve, passive isn't the same here like for the passive activity rules, right? Where, where passive is a business without material participation. This sounds more like investment income. Right, Mike. Passive is defined differently in the international rules. Passive in, for international is interest, dividends, rents, royalties, and gains on property that produces that kind of income. For tax years beginning after 2017, there are two more baskets, foreign branch income and subpart F inclusions under section 951 cap A. The foreign branch basket includes income of all foreign branches other than passive income. Foreign branch means a qualified business unit as defined in the foreign currency rules that is outside the U.S. See the video linked here. Subpart F was also amended for such years to require inclusion of deemed intangible income of CFCs under Section 951 Cap A. For a brief discussion of this global low-tax intangible income, see the video linked here. Everything else is general basket. Here's the formula for computing the limitation of the foreign tax credit for each basket. As you can see, it's very simple itself, but it's based on taxable income amounts, not gross income. We'll discuss how to get to foreign source taxable income in a few minutes. This credit limitation is computed separately for each basket. Corporations get a credit not only for foreign income tax they pay, but also for taxes paid by their subsidiaries. When the corporation receives a dividend from a 10% or more subsidiary, a portion of the foreign income tax paid by the subsidiary flows with the dividend. The taxable amount of the dividend is increased, or grossed up, by the amount of tax, so that the corporation is taxed on a pre-tax income, much the same as if it had earned the income itself. The amount of tax and gross up are equal to the same percent of taxes the subsidiary has paid as the dividend is of the after-tax earnings of the subsidiary. This provision does not apply to S-corporations. The amount of available deemed credit is computed under the formula on the slide. 
The pools mentioned are simply the accumulation of tax and earnings by basket, less amounts previously used. E&P refers to earnings and profits. Passive income received from foreign subsidiaries is looked through if certain ownership thresholds are met. The idea of the look-through provisions is to place a corporation that owns part or all of a foreign corporation in the same position as if it had earned the income itself. Yes, Mark. Steve, so the company shareholder picks up the income as the subsidiary earns it, just like in financials, correct? No, the regular tax rules still apply. A shareholder picks up income only when the sub pays a dividend. The look-through rules don't change this. What they do is convert passive income into general basket income. We'll talk about subpart F later. That does cause a shareholder to pick up the income earlier. To equalize things for a U.S. corporation that has foreign subsidiaries, the U.S. corporation grosses up any dividends for the deemed paid credit. Thus, if a foreign sub paid foreign tax at a 30% rate and paid a $70 dividend, the U.S. parent corporation would pick up $100 of income and get a $30 credit. Where U.S. corporations file a consolidated return, they together pay only one level of tax, and the foreign tax credit is allowed for foreign taxes paid by any of them. Most of the same foreign tax credit rules apply to individuals, just as they do corporations. There are two key exceptions. Individuals don't get the deemed paid credit. Second, Individuals apportion all itemized deductions, or their standard deduction, based on gross income. This includes interest, taxes, contributions, everything. And this brings us to the second quiz.